So I should have mentioned before, so the, um, the, the founder of Wandering Cooks, Angela Hurst, mm -hmm. um, who's an awesome lady, she actually can't be with us here today. She's in, um, she's in the US at Harvard um, because they've been awarded the largest um, urban um, shared kitchen, I think, in the world. So, so she's over there doing a program with Harvard, which is really awesome. So she sends her, uh, her, her love. Uh, she's a, a great girl. So, um, so if you're interested in, uh, in, um, in looking at the facilities down there, please drop Angela a line or have a chat with Maya. So, so um, Maya, tell us a little bit about your product. I, I don't know too much about it, but tell us about what it is and, what, and then I'll ask you again, but then how did you get into it? Um, I make a live probiotic drink that's vegan and I started making it because my sister came back from Melbourne with some kefir grains one day and she said, you need to make this drink, it's gonna change your life. Uh, and I have a six-year-old who was a baby at the time. So I made it and it was really good. And about two years ago, my sister decided that I should sell it at the markets because everyone should indulge in this fizzy drink that I've been making. Um, and that's kind of where we started organically. Uh, I joined Wandering Cooks, not last year, but the end of the year before. And went from fermenting like 15 liters of kefir in my kitchen to using a commercial kitchen and starting at 30 liters a week, which was double what I used to do. And this week we basically fermented 300 liters because wow. Brisbane got gastro, so our sales double when that happens. <laughs> cool. um, I think Wandering Cooks has been awesome because you meet so many people and you get a lot of ideas and you get a lot of feedback and you kind of realize when you're doing something your own way in your kitchen at home versus doing it commercially, you don't see your own flaws uh, and you know you need to have food and safety and that sort of thing. Wandering Cooks really enabled me to double, triple, exponentially expand my business um, and do so with the love and support of like-minded people. Cool. So just for the people who haven't been there, just explain what, what does Wondering Cooks look like? I mean, Wondering Cooks is work? awesome. It's, uh, if you've never been, it's actually just across the river in South Brisbane. It's this big warehouse which has five commercial uh, kitchens or prep facilities. There's a cold room, there's a freezer, there's a dry store space, there's a storage space. But then at the same time, like Ange has grown all our own herbs and vegetables that hang out the front. There's a little bar and every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there's different food trucks from all around Brisbane with different types of food. So people come together as a space. It's kind of, I think the closest thing that I can, being from Singapore, it's, it's almost like a hawker center where you have a constant and it's, it's very informal, it's very child friendly. And it's, it's just a, an awesome space. Like I've never come across anything like that anywhere else in Brisbane. Yeah. So it's, it's cool to be a part of it. Cool. And so, in terms of the benefit that it that that facility offers to a business like yours, what are the what are the key things that enables you to do that you couldn't do if you were trying to stay at home? So, I guess most people that start out there tend to want to start a business with food or with whatever, and it's expensive to get your own commercial kitchen. You have to have your licenses, your insurance, and all all the different things in place. And a lot of people just don't have that. I, I certainly didn't have it when I started. Hence, working at the markets. Um, what it does is you actually pay for a kitchen or a prep room or a cold room or a storage space that by the hour or by the week. So, you know, to, to pay for a commercial kitchen, you might be looking at four to $600 a week. If you're paying for two hours in a commercial kitchen, some storage space, you might be able to get away with as little as $85 a week, which is really awesome because then you can use your money and your capital and your energy focusing on getting your business up to that level before you leave Wandering Cooks and go out on your own. So it's kind of like a, 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 an incubation to help you grow and build your business so that eventually when you're actually really to take on everything by yourself, you have the know-how and you're able to do that rather than getting a bank loan and having all the gear and no idea and then taking on that lease and taking on everything and then failing in the first six months. Cool. So, um, so in terms of producing a food product, you've got to have a food license. Yes. Um, so how does that work in terms of Wandering Cooks? Does that enable you to, do you have to have your own food license or you do gotta, you need someone else's? You've got to get your own food license. Uh, I think most people end up going to Wandering Cooks because in order to have a food license, you have to use a commercial kitchen. 
So, you know, um, for most people to cook hot food versus to manufacture, you have to have your, your license is attached to a premise. So Wandering Cooks acts as that premise for a lot of people and the inspectors around quite regularly to make sure that everything's on top. Yeah. And do they have, is there, is there equipment there or is it just rooms or how does it? So there are equipments. Uh, I mainly use the prep kitchens and there is uh, a, san a commercial sanitizer and dishwasher, which I use because we recycle all our bottles. Um, and then there's under fridge cold room space, but there's also a cold room and a freezer. There are three, kitchen uh, three baking kitchens where there's two big commercial size ovens as well as two with sort of stove tops if you want to cook hot food. Uh, and then there's the cold room and the freezers as well. Okay. And they have a plannery mixer. They have certain, some things, not a lot of things. I don't use all of them, but they have a plannery mixer. So if you want to go, you know, most people have little mixers, but they have big, big mixers. And, you know, they have lots of different things there. And, and because it's a community, you can use and see how you can use stuff. So you don't have to outlay a lot of money to buy all the gear. You can actually rent it to start with and then, you know, move on from there. And if they don't have it, you can also purchase it and keep it there so that it's there for you as well. Cool. So in terms of, um, I mean, it's, it's easy, well, it's not easy, but you can make a product, but then you've got to sell it. Mm -hmm. So is there any advantages, does Wandering Cooks offer any advantage in terms of trying to get connected with consume, customers or, or the, the getting promotion they, of your product? They do have a lot of events, so they have like, uh, ooh, okay. They have a, a Meet the Maker event sometimes on a Wednesday night, and you can come and you meet the producer, and so they generate a lot of interest that way. Their food truck events normally get a lot of random people that come through because obviously the high rise apartments are all through Brisbane now. Uh, so you get lots of different people coming through, and they get to try There's something different on all the time. So the producers that go there will have something that might rotate once a month to get their stuff out there. And they have a uh, small batch marketing, a small batch directory, and a Wandering Cooks charter as well. Okay. And how do you interact with other food companies using it? Do you, is there a lot of interaction, or is it sort of a, on your own? It, it depends on the food company, I suppose. Some people are great to work next to or work with, and some people are really sloppy. Uh, it just, you know, it comes down to just working with people. Some people are awesome and some people aren't as awesome. Uh, but I'd say most people generally get along and you have to, because it's a community, you have to kind of work together. I find the people that don't work well normally don't end up coming back. They always either end up going broke or having to, choosing to go somewhere else because, you know, they get told off or they're penalised for not cleaning properly. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of uh, another young company that might be looking at getting into something like that, I mean, how do they go about sort of getting in touch with Wandering Cooks? And they, well, most people tend to happen to go there for a food truck and go, this is awesome, I can use this space. And then they meet Ange and she basically takes them through everything and they're there. Otherwise, you can find them on the website, you can find them on Facebook, you can find them on Instagram. I think they're on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter, so I don't know. Uh, and it's, it's actually really easy and they're really lovely to deal with. So... You know, it's, it's not like you're dealing with real people that are really passionate about food. So, especially Ange, and she's quite an enabler. Like, she's created this space where it's almost like an incubator to take little fledgling people with these great ideas and then get them home so that they're ready to take on the world. And normally when they do, they do really well. Yeah, cool. Um, so in terms of, uh, you know, advice you might give other, someone else that's got an idea uh, for a product that they've, um, they've thought about and they, they've always wondered whether or not it could work, um, what would be some of your advice you might give to them? I would say go in and talk to some of the other people. Just get a, get a lot of feedback and then do a few trial batches, really. I'm a firm believer in growing something organically rather than taking a big plunge and having no idea about that because the people with all the gear and no idea normally fail. And the people that start with nothing and grow gradually tend to, to do really well. Cool. I hope. And that's, <laughs> that's the story we heard from, uh, from Chobani. Started small and got the product right. And then, I mean, they obviously grew very, very quickly. But, um, but yeah, that story. So, um, and in terms of the actual business operation, so is it, did they charge you at an, at an hourly rate or can you use it any time of day, any time? So they have an hourly rate um, as a user that's just kind of grown and grown and grown. Uh, I use the kitchens 
two days a week, uh, but you can log in at any hour in the day. Some people prefer to work through the midnight hours when no one's there. Um, I pay for fridge space, uh, dry store space, and then kitchen time. And obviously, because I've booked in for a six-month slot at a certain rate, I get a certain rate. Whereas if you were to just book two random hours, that might be a slightly higher rate. So it, it's kind of, it's very affordable. Um, and it's also a very pleasant space to work with, even in this heat right yeah. now in Brisbane. Okay. <laughs> All right, look, that's, um, that's been great. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you.